Hello and welcome. This month, our Lunch and Learn is going to be discussing Day of Action, a very important day for Planned Parenthood patients and advocates across the state of New York. So let's get right into it. All right, let's get this out of the way. Uh, what is Day of Action, or DOA for short? So at Planned Parenthood of the North Country, New York, our mission is to help build a world in which every person, regardless of their race, income, insurance, gender identity, sexual orientation, abilities, or immigration status, can access expert, compassionate sexual and reproductive health care, information and education without shame and judgment. We are committed to advocating for policies that boldly expand access to affordable quality health care, strengthen sexual and reproductive rights, and dismantle the systemic racism that permeates the systems that form our society. So Day of Action is a day to uplift policies to our local and national Congress people that are important to Planned Parenthood, our patients and our supporters. It's a day to unify our voices and bring light to the needs that are being left in the background of society. As one voice, we hope to progress certain policies to help create a new and improved future for reproductive and sexual health care for all people. When is day of action? So the time to fight for your reproductive health and rights is definitely now. Uh, join us and many other Planned Parenthood, you know, supporters and staff members from New York affiliates on Tuesday, March 8th. So that's next Tuesday. Um, and this is at 12 p.m. Eastern. So noon um, is when the day of action starts. So. We'll rally with advocates from across the state to hear from leaders and lawmakers featuring Planned Parenthood Action Fund President and CEO, Alexis McGill Johnson, and a special guest, New York Governor Kathy Hochul will also be um, speaking at noon. So throughout the rest of the day, you will have the option to participate in virtual meetings with your elected officials working in the New York State, state Legislature. We hope you will make your voice heard with us. All right, so this is how you can sign up. Um, so for a day of action, um, these are two ways of getting to the same place. So you can scan the QR code if you have um, a mobile device that you're able to use a camera. Um, if you scan this over the camera, there should just be a pop-up on the top of your phone that allows you um, to go to the Safari and it should bring you right to this mobilize.us um, kind of sign up. So you should see Day of Action 2022, Planned Parenthood Empire State Acts. Um, if you aren't able to access it through the QR code, um, this might be a little bit easier by following this link. Um, so we have www.mobilize.us slash PPESA slash event slash 439016 slash. So if you go to that, it should um, directly sign you up or um, send you a form, get you to the form that you can sign up for Day of Action. Um, so once you do that, you are also able to sign up for additional lobby meetings. So Day of Action from noon to one is when um, you know our Planned Parenthood CEO and Kathy Hochul will be just talking with us along with uh, lots of other um, supporters and everything. Um, but then there's also breakout sessions for the different um, lobby meetings with legislators. So if you are interested in attending our legislative meeting this year, um, on the next slide is how to sign up for a lobby meeting with um, Billy Jones, our representative. So we'll be meeting with him at 2.30 to 3 p.m. Um, after the day of action, 12 to 1. Um, we will be sitting in a lobby meeting talking with Billy Jones, which is amazing and a great opportunity. So please join us, whether you're his constituent or not. Um, you can follow the link here or the QR code. Again, either way will take you to the same place. Um, but this is specifically for the Billy Jones lobby meeting. So um, let me talk more about um, how we're going to be discussing with our legislators, you know, um, the particular things that we're gonna be discussing with them this year. 
So that's in the next couple slides. Um, and if you are having trouble accessing and getting signed up for this, please, of course, message us. We're happy to help you. Okay, so how will it work this year with uh, COVID-19? So in the morning and afternoon, so like I just showed you, we have an afternoon lobby meeting. Um, we have the option to participate in that virtual meeting um, with our elected officials. Um, so again, we're meeting with Billy Jones um, and they he works in the New York State Library. So, okay. so you'll help advocate for funding for sexual and reproductive health services, strengthening equality in our state and other legislation like comprehensive sex education. So these are some of the um, important legislative priorities that we're bringing to the table when we're talking with our legislator, Billy Jones, um, but other Planned Parenthood staff from all over the state will be meeting with their legislators um, along with all of their Planned Parenthood supporters and um, kind of discussing with our legislators what is important um, and why. So for us, that last blurb, Planned Parenthood of North Country, New York, will be sending out updates when DOA gets closer on when these meetings will be. I just shared that information with you to start the presentation. We are meeting with Billy Jones at 2.30. So if there are any other meetings that pop up, we will be sure to add them. So be on the lookout. We will send emails if there is more opportunities. Um, but that looks like the only meeting for us this year. So please join us. So our representatives, um, here in upstate New York. So we have our New York State Senators. Um, we've got Chuck Schumer. We have Kirsten Gillibrand. We've got our House Representatives, Elise Stefanik and Patty Ritchie. Uh, we also have our Assembly people. So again, this is who we're, we'll, we'll be meeting with, um, our uh, Billy Jones Assembly member. Um, we also have Ken Blankenbush, Assemblyman, and we have Mark Walzik. So um, these people represent our um, different counties that uh, Planned Parenthood of the North Country New York covers. So um, these people help make the policies and um, push them forward. So um, we're really lucky to be able to meet with them. Legislative priorities for 2022. So. Um, if you'd like to see a copy of all of this, um, you can follow this link right here. Um, and the entire state of New York um, will be discussing these specific issues that Planned Parenthood um, finds to be really important and that we find um, really need to be talked about with our legislators at the moment. Um, so if you're curious about that, um, or you want access for being a part of COA, you can check these out. Um, but in the following slides, I will just give you kind of a brief overview of um, what is on these priorities for this year. So first of all, we have three different uh, reproductive and sexual health budgets that we're hoping to advance. Um, so that's just one ask is that these budgets actually get pushed um, further. So we're going to talk about the New York State Family Planning Grant, um, the abortion insurance coverage, the one-year post-pregnancy and Medicaid coverage. So we would like all of those to be advanced. So let's talk a little more specifically about them. So the New York State Family Planning Grant. By providing access to affordable reproductive health care services, the state's family planning grant helps to give people more control over their lives, health, careers, and economic security. As our state seeks to recover and rebuild, New York must increase funding levels for sexual and reproductive health care, including the state's family planning grant, to guarantee that these essential services remain available to all that need them. So definitely important. We want that. We would also like abortion insurance coverage. So what this is, for New Yorkers with private insurance governed by the state, the right to abortion coverage relies on 2017 state regulations, which require coverage of medically necessary abortions. However, for the purpose of private insurances, the Department of Financial Services narrowly defines medically necessary as abortions only in cases of rape, incest, and fetal malformation. Governor Hochul in 
included in her executive budget language that would strengthen access to insurance coverage for abortion by requiring that individual and group private insurers must broadly provide coverage for abortion care without co-payments, co-insurance, or annual deductibles, and to remove cost sharing. So really making that more equitable and inclusive for um, all people that may need to access it. One year of post-pregnancy Medicaid coverage. So according to the CDC, one in three pregnancy-related deaths occur between one week and one year post-pregnancy. Yet New York's Medicaid program, which covers nearly half of all births in the state, only provides coverage up to 60 days post-pregnancy. The executive budget proposes working with the federal government to provide year-long Medicaid coverage for individuals post-pregnancy rather than the current eligibility cutoff at 60 days. However, the administration's proposal omits coverage for immigrant women. In excluding a subset of post-pregnancy individuals, we are not furthering our shared goals of advancing health equity and reducing maternal mortality and morbidity for all New Yorkers. So it is really important that um, we'll be able to have the immigrant women also included in um, the post-pregnancy Medicaid coverage for up to a year. Very important. So those are the three budgets that we're hoping to um, talk to our legislator about and let them know how important these are. Um, so if any of those budgets really stuck out at you as something that is really important to you or someone you know, um, we'd love to hear your voice. I'm sure the um, legislators would also love to hear from you. So please um, consider joining. Um, especially if these are important topics to you. Um, but even if they're not, of course, um, we hope to have you either way. Um, so that is our first kind of um, priority is just those budgets. We want all of those. Um, but then there's two other priorities that we would like. They're a little different. We have the second one is uh, passing the equality amendment. So <laughs> New York has a historic opportunity to add an equality amendment to our state's constitution that broadly protects against discrimination. They definitely want that. So our state constitution is inadequate when it comes to equality and protections against discrimination. It is incredibly hard to bring forward a successful claim of discrimination under our state constitution. You must provide the discrimination was intentional that a uh, law or policy was enacted intending to discriminate. This is a very high standard that is almost impossible to meet because often discrimination happens not through intent, but through impact. A law or policy impacts an individual in a way that is discriminatory, even if it wasn't intended to. So that is one way that we could really improve. Um, and another way or another way that we're really not doing well is our constitution fails to prohibit discrimination against groups that have been historically targeted, including those with disabilities, LGBT plus individuals, immigrants, women, and pregnant people. So we really like to um, make sure that these groups are no longer discriminated against, right? Um, and third and finally for priorities, um, we would like to discuss ensuring that comprehensive sex education for all New York youth um, becomes a priority, right? Um, so overwhelmingly, New Yorkers do believe that young people should have access to comprehensive sex education. So basically, comprehensive sex education is when um, someone is learning all the things about their body and about their lives so that they can make healthy, um, informed decisions um, as they grow. Um, and unfortunately, there is no state requirement for teaching sex education, um, you know, specifically that comprehensive. Um, instead, based on where it's based on where young people live, which can lead to inequities in the information and skills that those young people acquire. Um, so it would be really important that there is at least some sort of state requirement um, so that youth that are in different areas aren't learning different things. Um, so information is power. When young people have the tools that they need to make healthy decisions about their bodies and their relationships, they have a brighter future. Um, comprehensive sex education has been shown to improve health outcomes for, and benefit our youth. 
So it would be really important to um, get this one passed. Unfortunately, New York lacks a requirement for sex education. Um, and as a result, our state does have a patchwork system based on where young people live, um, leading to inequities in the information and skills young people have. Um, so what that's saying is, you know, a young person in one part of the state may be learning something a little bit different than uh, youth in the other part of the state. Um, and we really hope that young people can get all the information, um, accurate information, um, you know, without shame and judgment um, so that they're able to lead, leave, lead a healthy life. Um, I think that's very important. I just want to make sure that that was well understood by this. Um, this. All right, so those are the three really important budget priorities. Feel really strongly about all of them, obviously. Um, but of course, if you, any of these topics are something that you are really passionate about, we would absolutely love to have you and have your voice heard, um, you know, to tell our legislators again, um, how important this is for us and for our supporters and the people in our communities. So just to recap, um, so who do we need? We need you. Um, it's going to be you, our elected officials, and then other Planned Parenthood advocates um, and activists. So you won't be alone. We'll all be together um, and we can just help uplift each other's voices. So um, this is going to be a rally at 12. So at noon is the rally, we're getting excited, and then we'll have breakout sessions for the lobby meetings. Um, so when? It's going to be March 8th uh, next week on uh, Tuesday. Rally starts at 12 um, Eastern time and legislative, legislative meetings throughout the day. So right now our legislative meeting that we're going to be attending is definitely from 2.30 to 3 with Billy Jones. So make sure to sign up for both the DOA rally at noon and the um, uh, lobby meeting with Billy Jones at 2.30. So um, make sure to sign up for both. It is virtually on Zoom. So you can attend from your home. You can attend really wherever um, works from you, for you. Um, we even had a class one time attend. Um, so really wherever is comfortable for you. Um, why? So obviously after listening to all this, hopefully you have your own reasons for wanting to attend, but um, we really, as I've been saying, um, want to hear your voices. So um, please come to make your voice heard if you um, are passionate about these topics or Planned Parenthood in general. Um, it's really important that you um, come and have your voice heard, um, you know, and make your legislators know what's at stake. Um, you know, you're their constituents, so they definitely want to hear from you. Um, again, I even said, even if you're not their constituent, it is important to them to know what people in the community are looking for. Um, and lastly, you'll get to connect with all of us and other advocates across the state, meeting all kinds of really important people that are doing really amazing, amazing work, um, you know, advancing sexual and reproductive health care in New York State. So really great opportunity. I hope you join us. Um, here is an especial invitation from our Planned Parenthood Empire State Act. So these are some of the um, folks that will be joining in different lobby meetings and um, for the uh, rally. So we really appreciate their um, invitation. Oh yeah, if you haven't had enough invitations yet, we really, really, really want you to come. <laughs> Bring you, um, anyone you know, in your family too that is a supporter of Planned Parenthood, you can join with someone else if you'd like, you know, your friend, your um, spouse, your child or something. Um, please, anybody is welcome. Oh. And that's it. So if you have more questions or you want more information um, or just generally would like to hear more from us and see more from us, um, please find us and follow us on social media. Um, 
ppncny.org is our uh, website. So there's lots of information there. You can uh, link to get an appointment um, among many other things. Um, that is our phone number. So if you'd like to speak to any one of us about getting um, signed up for DOA, um, those are that is the phone number in the extensions for anyone here in the education um, and advocacy departments. Um, so we can help you get set up. Uh, Instagram and Facebook as well. So if you want to message us on there with any questions or you want to follow along with um, you know, what's happening for DOA this year, uh, definitely check out the socials. We'll be posting a lot about it. So um, again, really hope to um, see some faces for our day of action this year. And uh, yeah, let us know if you need some help signing up. Bye.